Hi everyone, I'm Dr. D, and today I'm going to be talking about the human relations and human resources approaches. Um, I'm going to talk about the key issues and parties for each approach, how each approach would diagnose the fashion industry, and which parties actually use each of these approaches. Um, so let's consider the key issues and uh, parties when it comes to the human relations approach. Um, so first, the key issues in the human relations approach is really productivity and profit. And I'm going to kind of lump those together because in the ideas of this approach and really most of these more traditional approaches, the link between productivity and profit is very direct. The more productive we are, the more profit we make. And then the second key issue that they really consider is worker feelings. So we've got productivity and profit, worker feelings. Now, when it comes to who matters according to the human relations approach, it's really similar, similar to what we've heard before. It's really about management and about workers. So when it comes to the fashion industry, we're, when we're talking about management, we're talking about the fast fashion executives, we're talking about factory owners, um, and we're talking about factory managers. We could potentially even be talking about regional managers when it comes to the retail stores. When we're talking about workers, we're talking about the factory employees, the people who are actually producing and constructing the garments. Um, and we're also potentially talking about the retail employees. So when we kind of compare these two issues with these two uh, parties, we can kind of see what everybody's responsible for. The managers are uh, responsible for directing. Their job is to tell employees what to do or to tell the workers what to do. Um, but there, and so that's that's where when we're talking about productivity and profit. But when we're talking about worker feelings, their responsibility is also to ensure that workers are happy. That's really it. They're just looking for that happiness. Um, so if the workers are unhappy, then managers are not doing their job. And if workers are not producing, or if they're not at least clear about what they're supposed to be in terms of producing, then managers are also not doing their job. When it comes to the workers, they also have two responsibilities. One is to follow directions, to do what they're being told to do and to produce. But they're also responsible for communicating their feelings. If they're unhappy, uh, they should be expressing that. They should have an avenue to express that. And they should be taking advantage of that avenue. So we have sort of two key issues along with two uh, parties. And when we kind of look at these together, what we're seeing is these kind of responsibilities according to the human relations approach. So note there's quite a few similarities with the more kind of old-fashioned classical approach. What we're seeing is that we're still highly concerned with productivity uh, and by implication profit. Those really are still really important priorities according to the human relations approach. Um, we're also seeing that the key parties remain the same. We're still talking about management and workers and really not much of anybody else. Um, we're not talking about customers. We're certainly not talking about advertising. There's a lot of content, a lot of parties that we're still not considering in the human relations approach in the same way that the classical approach was not considering these. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the human resources approach. There's similarities and differences again uh, with the human relations and even with the classical approach. When it comes to the key parties in the human resources approach, we're looking at, and the, the key parties and the key issues, we're looking at slightly different parties and slightly different issues. So the two main issues that the human resources approach is concerned with are worker needs and making the most effective use of those workers. Notice that I'm not saying productivity or profit, but notice that it's implied in that second key issue. When I'm talking about making use of my employees, I'm talking about 
getting the most out of them that I can in order to be productive and in order to make profit. So productivity and profit are still definitely a priority when it comes to the human resources approach, but not quite as explicitly or overtly or as directly as in the human relations or the, the, the classical approaches. So in the human resources our pr approach, our two key issues are meeting workers' higher order needs, right, according to Matt. Maslow's hierarchy of needs and making effective use of those workers in order to achieve productivity and profit. Okay, so the key parties, who's important? Well, obviously we've already heard the workers. The workers are obviously important, but who manages those workers? Management. So it's the same parties again. Those parties are very consistent in these more traditional approaches. We're looking at management and workers. That's really who we're looking at. So what's management responsible for? Management is responsible for getting to know the workers and their needs in order to actually be able to meet those needs. Um, and then they're also responsible for matching employees' needs to order organizational needs. In other words, they're responsible for balancing the needs of the organization with the needs of the workers. That's their job, to balance those two things. And sometimes those two things are conflicting, but according to a lot of human resources researchers, uh, uh, according to a lot of human resources theorists and kind of thinkers, they're not actually as conflicting as we might think. In fact, workers want to work. They want to do the work. They just need to do work that meets their needs, that helps them achieve those higher order needs. So um, for managers, it's really about being creative and finding smart, insightful ways to balance organizational needs with worker needs and to find a way to make those match and mesh. For workers, their responsibilities are really communicating those needs, especially those higher order needs, um, as well as internal motivation. They're expected to have some degree of internal motivation to want to do some work. Um, and they're also responsible for sharing creative solutions to organizational problems. If they know that there's something that they can do, that they're able to do and motivated to do that's going to help the organization, they're expected to share that. So now we're looking at management and workers more in more kind of collaborative terms. We're looking at a lot of more creative solutions in this human resources approach. So the human resources approach is probably the most humane or human approach of the traditional approaches that we've looked at. When I say traditional approaches, I'm talking about the classical human relations and human resources approaches. So we're still seeing some similarities across all three of these kind of traditional approaches, um, but we are seeing an evolution and a shift from the more classical to the more human resources approach with human relations in, in the middle. Now that we've talked about the key issues and the key parties involved in the human relations and human resources approaches, let's talk about um, how this theory applies specifically to the fashion industry. An organizational consultant who takes a human relations approach to organizational communication would diagnose the fashion industry as flawed. Yes, management is providing direction but it is not considering the worker's feelings. Actually, it's detrimental to productivity and to profit because they're not considering their worker's feelings. The industry would be more productive if they just listened to workers. They have to make them, so management, right, has to make workers feel safer and feel more included. If they did that, then workers would inherently be motivated to do the work um, and employers would dedicate themselves even more and be more productive and therefore make the organization more profitable. There's no need for force, violence, or the unethical methods that the fashion industry is currently taking. Management just needs to listen to the workers and 
consider their feelings, strive to make them happier because right now the workers are not happy. Okay, so that's the human relations approach. The human relations is going to say, okay, you're doing okay on the whole productivity thing, but you could actually probably do even better if you just consider the worker's feelings. Human resources approach is going to take a slightly different uh, view of things. So let me switch my lens here. According to the human resources approach, right? If I was an organizational consultant who takes a human resources approach to organizational communication, I'm going to diagnose the fashion industry as broken. It is bad. Uh, workers' higher order, order needs are not being met, but not only that, their basic needs are not being met. Maslow's pyramid, we're not even meeting those very basic needs for safety right? Um, managers are not balancing the organization's needs with the employee's needs. They're prioritizing the organization's needs and not considering the workers at all. They're just doing a kind of a bare minimum of considering their needs for money, uh, but not safety, not well-being, certainly not uh, higher order needs of uh, right uh, potentially inclusion and self-esteem. They're just looking at pay and that's it. Really not balancing the needs of the organization and the employees. Um, so really a, a human resources person would say, Imagine the untapped potential just waiting to be coaxed out of these abused workers. You are losing out by being so horrific and not considering these workers' needs. Um, workers need to be treated like human beings, but also the incredible human resources that they are. Management needs to use their resource better in order to be more profitable. Again, remember, human resources may consider humans to be human beings with the needs of their very own, but they're still also very highly concerned with productivity and profit. They're just concerned with balancing the two, finding a solution that increases both worker needs and organization needs and organization needs always come down to productivity and profit. Now that we understand how the two human approaches perceive the fashion industry, let's consider people who actually use these approaches. Let's start with the human relations approach. Um, we see a few parties uh, taking this human relations approach. Namely, there are some academics and some economists who take this approach. Um, they claim that fast fashion companies could actually be more successful if they treated their employees better. Uh, remember that the human relations approach really prioritizes productivity and profit. And the best way to accomplish that is by having workers who are happy. Um, we also see many factory workers taking this approach because they've kind of been living under this classical approach. A human relations approach actually seems miles better. And so they are arguing, um, they're asking that their bosses pay attention to them, fulfill their most basic needs, including safety and a living wage. Um, and so they're implying that they would actually do better work, that the organization would be more uh, successful, that the industry would function better if we considered them as humans and gave them basic human and met their basic human needs. So that's the human relations approach. But when we're talking about the human resources approach, we have one really perfect example of someone who takes this human resources approach, and that's the CEO and founder of People Tree. I'm going to quote her straight from the movie, and you're going to see how she really exemplifies the human resources approach. She says, I think most fashion brands start with a concept of a collection or a look. They don't tend to think, 
who's going to make this product? And um, how can I ensure that my producers and suppliers are going to eat? So what we're doing here at People Tree is actually start with the skills that we have at each producer group and then design the collection up whilst also looking at the integrity of the collection in its aesthetic. So you can see here that she's striving to balance the needs of the people in the organization and the needs of the organization. She's saying, we need to consider the skills that these people have, right? That's my human resource. And we need to make sure that they're gonna eat, right? And that's my basic need. She's considering their basic needs. She's considering their higher order needs. She's saying, this is what we have as a human resource. This is what we need to accomplish to maintain this human resource, right? This is a priority. But then she also says, right, we also need to look at the integrity of the collection and its aesthetic. We also need to prioritize our organization's needs. It's just that we can do that by first prioritizing the humans in our organization. We can do both. We can prioritize both people and productivity. So here you hear her really balancing these two um, needs, the needs, of the, the, the needs of the people in the organization and the needs of the organization. And that's why she takes a human resources approach. She's really prioritizing both. So um, hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of the human relations and the human resources approaches, um, especially as they apply to the fashion industry.